scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I want you to believe in this prayer that you are praying. You are not wasting your time. Something is happening to you. Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. In Jesus' name. Now please listen, let me establish another prayer point. In Acts chapter 28, when you read from verse 1 and down to 6, the Bible says, when Paul had escaped the storm, remember, an angel appeared to him and he told them there shall be no loss. And the Bible says they went safely and arrived at an island called Melita. Now verse 2. 28 verse 2 the bible says when the locals he calls them the barbarians the people showed them kindness watch this now paul was about to reveal something that the people did not have the discernment to see the bible says there was a viper hiding in the wood a viper a venomous snake that could it it could it could bite you and even kill you how did it hide that those who brought down the wood did not see it and they put everything together and while they sat down there as soon as the wood was on fire the viper that was hiding there suddenly became exposed if fire was not there the viper will still hide in the wood and you will not know that you are living with an enemy but as soon as fire was lit the fire exposed the viper listen can i tell you i know this about the prayer ministry there are things that you may never understand occurrences and happenings of demon spirits it takes generating energy in the spirit and suddenly you will begin to see that the things you could not understand are now making sense what, what, why, why am I receiving all these assaults from the place of work what is this when my promotion is coming in the place of prayer fire can expose the viper fire can expose the viper lift your voice and pray pray with this understanding that everything that attempts to impede the purposes of God in my life by the power of the Holy Ghost the fire that comes in this prayer the fire exposed the viper the fire exposed the cause of your pain the fire exposed the cause of the delays the fire exposed the cause of the disfavor the fire exposed the cause of the antagonisms Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Shabrakatos koto prendegeta. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Is God helping us? Matthew chapter 12 from verse 43. Jesus taught us a very deep mystery. Jesus was teaching on the activity of spirits. And he said, when an unclean spirit, listen carefully, is gone out of a man, that it walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Next verse. The Bible says, then it will say, I will return to what? The man is free, but as far as the spirit is concerned, it is his house. And he says, I will return to my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he will find it empty. He will find it swept. He will find it garnished. Last verse. The Bible says, he goeth and take it with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they will enter in and dwell there and the last state of the man is worse than let me explain something to you listen it takes a man anointed by god with spiritual understanding to cast out a demon out of another do we agree on that and then the bible tells us something serious that that spirit goes to the desert and when it goes to the desert where there is no man to cast it by itself there is a condition in the desert that makes that spirit uncomfortable and it will prefer to come back and fight with that man a desert is a place of extreme heat and that when that spirit goes to that place in the presence of that extreme heat the spirit by itself with no one to cast it becomes uncomfortable that means when your body becomes like that desert when your life becomes like that desert that the spirit becomes uncomfortable because the desert is a place of heat the bible says he maketh his ministers his angels Can I tell you this? Listen, you don't know how cheap Satan is until you pray. Satan is as powerful as your prayerlessness makes him become. That a spirit in a human body will require a man anointed by the Holy Ghost to get it out. But it goes to a desert where there's no preacher, no keyboard, no drums, no choir, no protocol. The heat in the desert will cast it back and it will come to stay in someone else. That means when you become in the similitude of the heat of that desert, your life and everything around you becomes a no-go zone for any operation of demon spirits. Is someone ready to pray? You are praying with this understanding that I am praying to become in experience a flame of fire. Lift your voice and pray. A flame of fire. 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 A flame of fire.
Don't be tired. Make sure you're praying. Come on, just praise him. In Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Very powerful scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Is it projected? Can you see it? Can we read it together? One, two, read. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Hold on. Wherefore, your favor would have arrived since. Wherefore, your lifting, wherefore, your destiny helper would have arrived. He said, I tried once and again. But Satan, listen, I understand this scripture very, very well. Let me tell you a story and then we'll pray. Sir, I don't know how many years now, I was praying one night, true story. And then my my ceiling suddenly disappeared in that vision and then i'm seeing this creature and it is looking at me having eyes that are as big as a human head i'm not exaggerating it looked like a dinosaur and it was looking at me red eyes and then it had a tail the tail had its own life you could detach it and it would still be alive and he was looking at me with fierce anger and he made a statement he says so you think you can bring god's people into abundance that was a statement but satan hindered us you will you will be amazed to know how many things would have been easy for you But Satan hindered us. Now listen, let me tell you this. Even though it happened with Jesus, I want to explain something to you. Hmm. The centurion in one of the synoptic accounts pleaded with Jesus to come and rescue their child from dying. Remember that story? While Jesus was on his way going, another woman interrupted him and said please i have an issue of blood and he focused and was dealing with her issue by the time he was done in one of the synoptic accounts they said this other person had died timing matters in destiny hear me it was the delay of the bridegroom that made the five other virgins if the bridegroom came early all the ten they were all virgins the delay of the bridegroom made the oil of the five they all started well but the bridegroom was late i want you to pray with understanding that every hindrance i desire to come to you once and again only god knows how many things in abuja have been authorized by prophecy to come to you they have tried they tried in 2019 they tried in 2020 Lift your voice and pray with understanding. I clear away every hindrance by the blood of the Lamb. Paros kates kote mashata. Open doors that should have come. Lift things that should have come. Answers to prayer that should have come. Alike parus kate prete katos kali adabos, e prete katos koto prete kate le katos, shames konde prete katos kiata. Sede prete kati bash. Let 
Rebecca Proscoto Maria Tabarando Shane, Ebrecato Scotto Prato Scotto Brenda Gadeva, Ebrecato Sobroso Sicatelegot, Macata Brenda Gabarusiata, Ecreto Scotto Shoto Brenda Gatebaratos. wonder the results you will get from this prayer believe me now listen once upon a time in Bible days there was a criminal called Barabbas listen carefully many of you will be surprised the reason and the explanation for disfavor around your life there was a criminal called Barabbas who had been troubling the people and they apprehended him and, and kept him and then one time when they caught Jesus also, listen to me, Pontius Pilate brought Jesus to stand and brought Barabbas to stand and they asked the people, who do you want to be crucified and who should be released? There was a spirit that came upon the people and they looked at Jesus and said this is the one to crucify and release the criminal. How do you in your right mind release a criminal? So don't be surprised that there can be four people in the office who are supposed to be promoted and in spite of your capacity that there is an orchestration of darkness where good can be called evil and evil can be called good. He said do not allow your good to be evil spoken of. That means if you keep quiet and you don't pray, you can be doing good but a perception can come on your good and it will be seen as evil are you ready to pray open your mouth and decree and declare my good will be rewarded as good my good will never be evil spoken of barabbas should never be released a criminal in the stead of a righteous man Please pray. your good be evil spoken of do not let your good be evil spoken of oh man of God oh businessman oh career person contend in prayer do not allow your good to be misrepresented hallelujah 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 praise the Lord let me show you a mystery in Genesis chapter 24 and verse 1 the Bible says and Abraham was old and well stricken in age help me finish that scripture and the Lord had blessed him in how many things so God is able to grant rest round about. Now please come with me to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Acts 16. Acts chapter 16. 
from verse 25 Acts 16 from verse 25 now when you begin to read contextually you will see that Paul casted a demon out of a lady who brought gain for her masters by divination is that true on account of that miracle it boomeranged on them and they now took them and kept them in prison but there's something I want to show now a prison is a place of confinement it's a place of limitation the Bible says at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them 26 suddenly there was a great earthquake hallelujah so that the foundations of the prison were shaken please read the next sentence everyone and immediately all doors how many doors how many doors immediately once there was an earthquake all doors financial doors open all doors open a god can give a man rest round about he says all doors open all doors open listen when you read second kings chapter 5 will not turn there for sake of time the bible says naaman there was a man called naaman he was the captain of the syrian army he says he said he was a valiant man in war but he was leprous thank god for the areas you have gotten results but for the sake of one other area you must insist in prayer that in this year all doors open lift your voice and pray all doors all doors all doors all doors all doors in the marvelous name of jesus all doors all doors open all doors doors of favor open all doors doors of speed open Relationships open, doors of fruitfulness open. Hallelujah! 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 We're wrapping up. Please do not forget what I want to share with you now. Please look up. Let me establish probably the last prayer point or so. The gospel, the gospel that we, that we preach has two sides to it. There is the message that saves. That is the first dimension of the gospel, the message that saves. And the key to propagating that message is evangelism. Are we together? But there is the second dimension to it, the ideology that transforms society. So there are two sides to the gospel there is the message that saves there is the ideology that transforms society the key to advancing the message is called evangelism but the key to advancing the ideology is called influence i'm establishing my prayer request now my prayer point so for you to completely preach the gospel you need to embrace the message that saves that deals with you personal salvation but territorial salvation is the mindset that is introduced into systems and structures that enthrones Christ are we together now 
if you focus only on the message that saves you will be saved as an individual but your territory will frustrate your christian experience an example was lot in sodom and gomorrah lot was a righteous man as a person but he was among a people who were depraved and he could not find expression so there are two keys to kingdom advance number one is evangelism number two is influence satan has a primary assignment to stop both but if for any reason he can't do anything about your receiving jesus now your personal salvation is a done deal the next place of attack is your influence what is influence influence is the capacity to cause men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty Territories can be changed overnight with the power of influence. Cultures are shaped through influence. The Bible says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Can I tell you, most people downplay the power of influence. At every point in your life, someone is influencing you. And you are to bring the influence of the kingdom. Satan will fight influence in any way he can i want to show you a scripture because the gates of influence is about to open for someone are we together in isaiah chapter 60 when you read from verse 1 to 3 it says arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you I would like to quote this many times from Amplified. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. It says, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Listen carefully. Verse 2 says, for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen in you. Verse 3 influence gentiles all nations shall come not to you to your light and even their arrogant kings their kings already have results they won't come to your light they come to the brightness of your rising are we together the end time church is going to advance the frontiers of the kingdom not only through evangelism and discipleship but it will come through influence acts chapter 12. oh someone's life is changing acts chapter 12 from verse 1. please do not forget this scripture and this revelation now watch this you know that the disciples of jesus i want to show you how satan fights influence you know the disciples of Jesus were in different levels there was the 70 or 72 he had the 12 but there were three people there were things that they saw the rest did not see and Satan marked every one of them he started by beheading James it was Peter James and John the threefold cord that cannot be easily, easily broken when he found James and they beheaded him he went straight to Paul. The Bible says they killed James and he saw that it pleased the Jews and he went straight to Peter. During the days of the unleavened bread, be patient, let's read. The Bible says when he had apprehended Peter, he put him in where? Prison. What was he fighting? He put him in prison. You would think that would be enough but then he brought four quaternions of soldiers to still keep him in prison. It was not just confinement he wanted. Four, eight soldiers again covered him, intending after Easter to bring him forth before the people. Verse 5, the Bible says, Peter therefore was kept in prison. Please help me finish the remaining part of that sentence. But prayer was made 
this was what was not done for James unfortunately there is no record that they stood in for James and James died but when Peter was there the church said no way there is something we can do please keep it there we're still reading the Bible says prayers was made without season of the church unto God for him the result verse 6 the Bible says and when Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains Abba you lock a man in prison tie him with chains and put eight soldiers that's not a fight for liberty is influence and the Bible says that the keepers were there before the door who kept the prison verse 7 and behold the angel of the Lord came in response to prayer listen and a light shined in that prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell from his hands verse 8 the Bible says the angel said guard yourself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me verse 9 and when he went out listen carefully he followed him and wist not that which was true which was done by the angel but he thought he saw a vision now verse 10 the Bible says he held Peter the angel and they passed the first and second word or gate watch this now they passed the first gate he was no longer in prison but he was still confined they passed the second gate far from the prison but still no liberty and the Bible says and they came to the iron gate which leaded to where so there is a gate that leads to the city every man's city is his place of influence did the Bible not say you are <laughs> listen there is a gate that leads to the city when that gate opens the city must see you for who you are and now begin to place a demand the iron gate that leads to the city businessmen hear me you can be in a city and yet spiritually you are not there because there are gates that must open I understand what I'm telling you listen in Zaria one time there are few only few people here that really understand you know that may know Zaria the Lord asked me to trek from a place quite far in town and to trek down to a place called aviation and I was trekking and just speaking over that territory because there are spirits that reside over that place I know what it means for the tulip gates of a city to be opened can I tell you you can be doing I've seen many gifted people sir anointed and sincere but the gates that leads to the city has not been opened I've seen business people who cannot understand preachers sincere love God anointed but the two leaf gates in ancient times you would never come into a city until the gate is open is that true every city spiritually has gates just because you move there physically does not mean the gate is open there is a protocol to influence now watch this the first gate opened the second gate opened and the Bible says this very gate was called the iron gate and my Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in Sunday when Jesus prophetically in Psalm 24 
was returning back to the land of the living there was a cry lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors hold on those doors have been there for a long time they are used to closing over people and the gates replied who is this king of glory can i tell you this listen for a few of you who may have seen the posters that and i'm saying this respectfully of my coming into the city when i was praying that map of abuja or something there's one i i, I don't i still don't know the names of your cities you won't believe it cities is the city gates there's one map there like that that was what i saw in my vision that was why i told them to put it in the you know the the billboard or whatever it is because you see let me tell you sincerely spiritually speaking gates have seen sit um, um cities have gates you want to understand this properly go to the north you won't get it very well around the south you go to the north you see the entrance of every major place you see that now the gates do not have anything closing them but you enter and believe you are in you the city will show you you are not invited There are many business people in Abuja. You see, the Bible says they know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Psalms 82 and now verse 5. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. The tragedy is verse 7. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. It takes high level spiritual illumination to be able to command authority even in prayer. The foundation for effective prayer is access to the mysteries of the kingdom so that you pray in keeping with the will of God. You can know your prayer will be answered. Your intelligence is consistent with scripture. You are not praying amiss. The iron gate that opens to the city can I tell you this some of you here are business people some of you here have schools you're running some of you here might be other ministers who came that there is a gate that has to open but when that gate opens you will marvel and wonder the Bible says Gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 people you would think he did, he did not know where they were hiding. He just, there was a shofar. Can I tell you, there is an anointing called a hear ye him anointing. People don't just listen to you because you have something to say. It takes more than that. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Creation was given an instruction. Hear ye him. When that grace comes on your business right from where you are when it comes upon the works of your hands I'm saying this because we're about to pray that that gate in the name of Jesus Christ must be opened hither and tither because the king of glory wants to make a triumphant entry are you ready to pray lift your voice and decree and declare this a fata be open gates a fata hita and tita be open gates be open hala da pa shabaka ta brada gada bala kotos The iron gate be broken, be open of influence 
the gate that leads to the city. Be open. Be open. The King of Glory desires to come in. Be open. Jesus name let me pray for you now you have done the praying second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 from the rising of the Sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Second Corinthians, I want to very sensitive now you have prayed let me pray for you second Corinthians 9 and verse 8 hallelujah Sir, ordinarily I would have told you this maybe privately in the office, but the Lord is asking me to say it in the open. I just saw a vision and I saw you and your wife, and I saw it was like two sheep, and you were walking and you had gotten to the end of one sheep, and I saw a hand stretched and it held you to another sheep and it began to move. I believe, I not this stand, sir. I believe that another phase of ministry you hear what I'm saying go and write it down in addition to what you are currently doing another strange apostolic and, di and prophetic dimension of ministry is opening because this instruction to pray for a long time there are many things that God has not said yet that by by the end of it he will tell why he called for a fast like this just believe me that this fasting is midwifing one season into another that's why god is saying i should say it openly so that the day he tells you they will know that it's not you that just said it that's why i'm saying it in the open ordinarily i may just go and tell him in the office i saw a hand like a sheep sheep and just held him and another season so don't you be surprised what will come out by revelation in the course of this fasting do not think it is the flesh but hear me it is another dimension of ministry this is true it is another dimension of ministry and there are three very strong anointings that will in multiplied dimensions would start working in the life of this man and his wife number one is the teaching grace number two is the healing grace number three is the prophetic grace these three graces in strong dimensions 
you would begin to see testimonies and manifestations of the hand of God this word would not fail it will happen by the Spirit the second thing I want to say and I apologize again God is asking me to say it and I'm saying it in the open your membership have not yet come the people you are raising are leaders by the time the leaders are raised it will be like an inferno of fire the kind of training you are giving these people is not for membership there is a strengthening they are building capacity because the oil stops when there is no more vessel and so he's listen many of you here you think you are just members of a ministry you are the leaders he's building capacity when he's done it was when the ark was ready that the animals started coming they don't come to wait until the ark i'm speaking this by prophecy an ark of three stories of gopher wood is being built even in this ministry and with this man and when that ark is done the same grace that brought the animals on their own they came two by two and seven by seven they will come by the spirit it will be a wonder to behold what God can do with a man who hears him give Jesus praise now I want to pray for you do you believe in the power of God second Corinthians please stand sir please second Corinthians 9 and verse 8 listen after tonight you must do well to go and invite everybody you know look at what I mean as you are here I'm sure some of you is paining you right now that my loved ones should be here I was glad when they said unto me let us go not let me go let us go It's wrong when you are going alone it is let us go anything that is godly is always let us let us make let us go and God is able to make all grace not some grace grace is in dimensions God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in how many things may abound unto every good work let me explain this scripture that means God is able to coordinate every grace you need and to bring it within your reach this scripture is based on the principle that what is on you is what controls what is around you your results are a report card telling us what is on you or not on you thou anointest my head with oil not my cup it is my head that is anointed but I know the size of what is on my head by looking at my cup if my cup is overflowing it means what is on me is overflowing so the physical results in your life are attestations to the grace the kind and the level of grace that you carry are we together you can know that the grace that is upon you has multiplied by the results that change you can know what kind of grace you carry by the testimonies that recycle around your life they are receipts when they change something changed are we together meetings like this by the Spirit of God leads us to pray but then it gives us an opportunity to be able to take something upon our heads that we did not come to church with you can carry something that you did not come with the Bible says when the donkey of Kish was missing they went three days this young man called Saul hmm. and after three days when they did not find it he said let's return back he said no we've left too much there is a seer let us go to that man the word of the Lord does not fail and as soon as they saw Samuel I was so blessed when your man of God made a profound statement he said God's strategy is man it's not a lie when the devil wants to destroy you he introduces a man when God wants to help you he introduces a man in any case it will still be by the ministry of man 
are we together we are nothing on our own except for the graces that we carry listen the grace of God is a mysterious advantage when it comes upon a man with understanding it can turn the narrative of your destiny in one day when they met Samuel look at a problem that was costing them so much difficulty but as soon as they met a man look at how he trivialized that problem Samuel said no go up I will tell you what is in your heart as soon as Saul saw Samuel the donkey started returning home nobody asked the donkey to return home as soon as Saul met with Samuel be careful what you call impossible there are graces that have been anointed to trivialize your challenges and make it look as if the devil does not exist three things happen when Saul met with Samuel number one he said is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance and he poured oil on his head and said three things will happen to you number one the ass the donkey that has been missing you will find out that restoration has happened the anointing can bring restoration that means just because it left you does not mean it left the earth it is still there under a certain condition it can come back number two he said on your way going you will find three men holding two loaves of bread they will salute you and they will give it to you as if they did not know what to do with the bread they bought bread and were on their way home but because of what was on you they will give you two loaves say favor say honor number three it says you will come to a garrison of the Philistines and when you get there something will happen to you and you will now begin to prophesy and he so prophesied that they said is Saul when did Saul who trained you we know how long it took for us to be prophets by what mystery did you access this anointing that by April you will invite someone and say come to my house and you'll be driving very far thinking is where he knew you to be the last time you met and he will tell you no 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 I forgot to tell you I'm no longer there listen can I tell you this please hear me I believe in diligence I believe in process but there is a prophetic advantage to living can I tell you this true dominion the zenith of dominion is dominion over time not things time you are truly walking in dominion when you can compress time and I will restore not the things the years let me tell you how God restores and I will pray with you I hope I'm not wasting your time that means you see in the presence of God there's nothing like past present and future that's a reality that only resides within the realm of men he only broke his realm into this tripartite the Trinity of time past present and future to help mankind relate with him but God does not live in time he does not even live in eternity because eternity is also time it's just time without end God's realm is called now everything is a present reality you see in truth so when God reaches into what you call he can go into your yesterday and your tomorrow you see physically when you leave yesterday you don't go back again that privilege was not given to men ordinarily except by the gifts of the spirit and you can tap into information but from a physical standpoint when it's gone it's gone but God will find out based on his predeterminate counsel listen carefully how God restores the things that should have happened to you because with every time God gives you there are things that should have happened 
if by demonic manipulation or your ignorance or carelessness that thing did not happen god will go back into it and push the thing to your future and make it happen again are we together so if by god's predetermined counsel you should be in your own house by 2018 but by lack of sensitivity you did not take advantage of the prophetic word that came from the man of god maybe at that time you were not serious spiritually and you trivialized the word you see that now the house you are building now is not the same one that should have come so what god does is that instead of you going through the labor of building it he can fix that rep that blessing under a class of blessings called prepared blessings hear me there are times that god will send rain on your farm and the crops will grow well you will do the harvesting and the storage but there are times the urgency in your life does not require corn it requires bread directly both corn and bread it is still the same god who sends it god is able to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater what if the sower is hungry because there are times the sower is hungry and he will need to eat to have the strength to go and sow so god gives you bread so that from the strength of that bread you can go and sow are you learning now believing that the only channel of god's blessing is your farm you are limiting his potentials manna can come from heaven manna coming from heaven does not stop you from sowing it's an act of his mercy to make sure you are satisfied early then you go and sow your name is to be hallowed I spent one month it was a February sir the whole of that one month I was praying and studying on favor because I didn't come from a background that would easily give me that privilege and I knew that if I were to do ministry with integrity I would need the favor of God when I found the keys and found the grace I knew this was it I want to pray some prayers for you now and I want you to receive it listen you will thank your man of God and you will see the sincerity and the love in his heart after this meeting and the testimonies that follow listen it takes more than desire to excel the kind and the quality of grace that is upon you when we honor men we don't honor bodies we honor the sacrifice of alignment alongside the election of grace that has captured this vast dimension of graces upon their lives are we together i want to pray for this grace for favor number one exodus 11 and verse 3 please give us exodus 11 and verse 3 and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians moreover the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people notice if it is favor it works with the power of sight that means when the favor of God is upon you the only person who should not bless you is a blind man the moment they can make contact with you they are compelled by an anointing hold on the reason why Moses was great was that it was in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of the people when favor comes on you both the king and the people see you in a way that is deserving of favor Exodus 3 21 and I will give Joshua Selman favor in the sight of the Egyptians 
what is the proof of the favor and it shall come to pass that when ye go prophesy to yourself i shall not go empty esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the b part and esther obtained favor in the sight of how many all them that looked upon her not them who wanted to favor her your mistake was just to look the moment you can look the anointing works by the power of sight please i'm not just exciting you believe in what i'm telling you she obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her verse 17 same chapter read verse 17 if you're a christian one to read and the king loved esther above stop above above that means before esther came there were others he was looking at but as soon as she showed up he loved them but he loved her above and she obtained grace and favor again in his more than all the virgins so that he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti are you ready to receive I want to pray for you now the power of God will come on you you don't have to kneel just believe There is a lady here who is going to shout right now a loud shout under the anointing the moment that happens that grace for favor will begin to move across this is what i just saw in the spirit the power of god is coming on you it's not something you can stand it is it is these are dynamics of the anointing a loud shout is an anointing of the spirit that will come right now i'm ready to pray for you now father in the name of jesus christ by the spirit of the living god help them please i decree right now may that grace and that unction my goodness let it come upon you right now take that grace take that grace take that anointing help that lady please supernatural favor I decree and declare I place it as a mantle upon your head go and excel I shift systems and structures by the power of prophecy may that grace rest upon you find favor with systems find favor with structures find favor with Egyptians find favor with kings in the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus hallelujah there is honor is a grace listen you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred upon you by another honor is a grace that is transferable do you know what is, is honor honor means to be seen for who you truly are and to be rewarded to match the true worth of your person that's what honor means favor means to be preferred but honor means to be given the regard that befits your sacrifice you can be great but if honor is not on you you will not be rewarded to match your true worth let me show you a scripture numbers 27 from verse 18 to 20 let's hurry up for time we're wrapping up now 
the Lord said unto Moses take thee Joshua the son of Nun a man in whom is the spirit already and lay your hands upon him is that in your Bible verse 2 it says set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight verse 20 please read it if you're a Christian one to read and thou shalt put some of your honor on him that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient people don't listen to you just because you are sincere there is honor that comes upon you call Moses he's already filled with the Holy Spirit but lay your hands upon him and then in anointing him don't leave him like that transfer some of your honor to him honor is transferable can I pray for you father just help those under the anointing I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God may that grace right now may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ that grace for honor everything that has despised your grace everything that has despised the investment of God upon your life I change that narrative by this mantle in the name of Jesus Christ help them please in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah who is Joseph Joseph I'm hearing a name Joseph who is that Joseph we're wrapping up what do you do my friend What do you hold on? What do you do? What do you do? Who is a who is a music minister here? You is, is he a member? Huh? You sing. Listen to me. You see that prayer on the iron gate? Go and pray that prayer when you go back. I want to pray for you because truly God wants to lift you. But this this is not just by human connections is not what this is by the spirit i pray for you in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god may that grace that gives visibility something is coming on you right now take that grace now in the name of jesus christ you will never be the same take that grace by the power of the holy spirit I, 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 God is there anybody here that works in access bank access bank access bank oh I know him I didn't even know he was one There are strange liftings that are coming to people in this place I stretch my hands three of you I, you don't have to kneel in the name of Jesus Christ I place an anointing upon you that in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ this grace for favor let it come upon you right now for your lifting you take that grace find favor even with your administrators in the name of Jesus and every conspiracy of darkness to implicate you we cancel it right now by the blood of the Lamb 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayers I want to release the grace for speed truly there is a grace for speed now hear me I don't know how we're going to do it I just have maybe less than two three minutes and I'm done thank you for your patience with me but I want to release this grace from the depth of my heart I told you true dominion is dominion over time now whether you are an usher or not please help me in this prayer because the hand of God will come on people and they will start running physically I want you to help them so they don't injure themselves and you can bring them out right now I stretch my hands this this ministry would be characterized by and with a strange order of speed I stretch my hands at the count of three my God I'm just seeing fire rest on people please bring us under the anointing right now at the count of three one bring them up two three take that grace now help them speed speed help them please my God speed speed receive that grace and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab I command speed speed in business speed in ministry speed in career I cause the root of delay by the power that raised Christ from the dead I cause a bakato shedegata prateske tebe katosiata emprakatos katia receive speed receive speed receive speed in the name of Jesus Christ you'll never be the same speed 10 years in one year 10 years I prophesy 10 years in one year the results of 10 years in one year 10 years in one year in the name of Jesus Christ help that woman please in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me I stand in partnership with the grace upon your man of God in three months from today according to the mystery of the ark in the house of Obed Edom I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and I speak to you between now and the next three months I shift you to a new season help them I shift you to a new season hear me we're wrapping up that night could not the king sleep and he said bring me the chronicles and they opened the chronicles and he saw where Mordecai had saved the life of the king and was not rewarded hear me many of you have been part of the success story of many and yet you've been forgotten I stand by prophecy let the book of remembrance be open now there is an anointing coming on your wife sir I'm seeing an angel pour like oil on her and the Lord is saying she's entering a season of reward this is what I'm seeing in the spirit she's entering a strange season of reward let me say it again anyone who has forgotten you I stand in partnership with the grace of your man of God may that book of remembrance be opened now is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake in the name of Jesus the son of the living God by this fire 
that is coming upon you i decree and declare wherever the helpers of your destiny are in this abuja i speak to the north i speak to the east i speak to the south i speak to the west i command them to show up for you now hallelujah last prayer point please hear me the bible says believe in the lord your god so shall you be established it says believe in his prophets so shall you prosper can i tell you this there are different dimensions and levels of wealth there is wealth that comes by providing value there is wealth that comes by relationships but there is wealth that comes by prophecy it says by this time tomorrow and when he said it the one who the king leans on said even if God will open the windows of heaven might this happen I want to pray for you praying the prophetic dimension of wealth is not a license for laziness however in this kingdom we are not just left with economic principles there is a superior advantage that in addition to the value that we provide in addition to the relationships that come based on our impacting lives my life is a testimony I can tell you there is a prophetic dimension of wealth in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters I pray for you finally in this prayer session of fasting and praying in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God the same grace that took a raven and it brought bread for Elijah at Brook Cherith the same grace that took coin and put it in the mouth of a fish the same grace that turned five loaf and two fish to feed five thousand people with 12 baskets remaining by the power of the prophetic in the name of Jesus I connect you to strategic relationships strategic relationships in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ I pray let me encourage particularly those who have come here for the first time since God has brought you here make it a commitment to commit yourself in prayer commit yourself if just one meeting brought you this kind of impact you can imagine what happens he said ye who have continued with me and so let me lend my voice with your man of God to encourage you that more and more people continue to come and experience the good hand of God and that you have the staying power and the stamina to finish through in the name of Jesus for those of you who have been exhausted let fresh strength be supplied for you in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ thank you so much sir thank you ma I sincerely appreciate you the Lord bless you in Jesus name dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate kato. Kate branda kata pako tosko to break kate kate kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.